So here's a listing of a number of recent announcements that have been made by hardware suppliers into the smart grid industry, including uh, one that we're very excited about uh, that recently was announced at Distributech with iTron. And what we have seen and what we continue to support is the levels of integration and the addition of cellular communications into smart metering and distribution automation smart grid devices. And so we're very happy with the levels of acceleration and Qualcomm will continue to do our part as a hardware supplier and deliverer of uh, software services to ensure that the industry comes to the market with the latest and, and absolute best solutions uh, for the industry. And finally, it dawned on me that there was probably some aspects of the presentation or the discussion today which are more carrier-centric. So I did reach out to my colleagues and some of the domestic uh, carriers, including AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon, as well as a lot of my ongoing engagement with carriers overseas. AT&T specifically gave me back some, some commentary that I could uh, share with you. First one is, a lot of you may not be aware, but AT&T sells a product today which is called the ARMS, uh, which is a portable and truckable customer sales site so that you can actually purchase AT&T infrastructure, which you can readily deploy. You can drive the truck, you can own this, and you can deploy this to accelerate the network restoration after a major emergency. This is in addition to everything that the carrier does with their own cellular base stations on wheels and diesel generators and satellite communications. So I thought that was very interesting. In terms of disaster recovery, AT&T, as well as many other carriers, um, in fact, probably the majority of them, have tremendous investments in human resources and in, uh, in terms of capital equipment, which can readily and rapidly do network restoration. But they also have a lot of redundancy in their networks uh, with multiple network operation centers. And so the, this is definitely something that can be leveraged. And then I just wanted to touch that SLAs are certainly a discussion point with a lot of carriers today. AT&T at Davalos had mentioned that they currently engage in SLA discussions. And also quality of service, especially with some of the 3G and 4G uh, network technologies which allow for quality of service, those are certainly fine points to have discussion for as well. Jason, pardon me, this is Jesse. Would you just take a moment to define SLA and define QoS? Uh, yes, so service level agreements, uh, SLA, has to do with the types of guarantees that I guess not just a public carrier network but also a private network, the assurances that you can get information conveyed or from point to point in a reliable fashion. So it has to, a lot to do with reliability and uh, various levels of assurance. And then quality of service has to do with how you can prioritize certain traffic. And all of these are discussion points that the carriers are very willing to engage in. Clearly, there's different aspects for what type of request you may have, but they're very happy to have these conversations. And many of these conversations have already been taken into effect and part of some of the cellular uh, designs that, uh, that currently exist. And Thank you. You're welcome. And then Qualcomm's overall position in the industry is we're engaging carriers all over the world and a lot of the same solutions that are being deployed in the U.S. can certainly be leveraged as global solutions on a number of different networks. Just think about how smartphones get deployed in multiple countries on multiple networks on the same day. The same applies from a cellular standpoint for a global smart grid product. Thank you, Jason. This is Jesse Burst from Smart Grid News. Our topic today is how utilities are using cellular technology. And we've just been talking with Jason Ellis from Qualcomm. So next I'd like to bring on Sanvir Gujral from Qualcomm to talk about some of the technology progress. And I think this will be especially important to you if you're a utility or a consultant to a utility and you're working with vendors to spec out your next generation meters, or if you're creating your shopping list of what to look for, or if you're thinking about building multiple applications with and on top of the meter, I think you're going to want to understand uh, some of these new technology directions that uh, Sunbeer is going to bring up. 
He is in Smart Energy Product Management at Qualcomm. Before that, he held integrated circuit design and software engineering and product management positions at a number of leading companies. He's got both bachelor and master of science degrees in electrical and computer engineering from the University of California, Irvine. So, Sunveer, a welcome. Thank you, Jesse. So, b before I get started, I thought it would be a good idea for me to review exactly how Qualcomm participates in the smart energy and M2M marketplace. I I'm going to talk about some of the technologies that we bring, especially for the smart grid marketplace. So, uh, I think it's, it's good for us to understand how it plays in the overall value chain of the number of uh, players that participate in the market. So Qualcomm develops and manufactures chipsets and licenses its 3G and 4G cellular technology to not only smartphone manufacturers, as you all might have seen, but also to manufacturers of modules that are more commonly used for generic M2M or machine-to-machine -machine use cases. These modules are in turn used by system integrators to create solutions focused on particular use cases and industry verticals. So basically the same modem technology from Qualcomm goes into a very diverse set of end applications uh, ranging from in-car telematics to industrial routers to smart meters. And as volumes increase in any particular application or vertical, it starts making economic sense to directly incorporate our chipset at the board level. And this is how we see the Direct Connect smart meter market playing out. So let's talk specifics about the modem technology that we're bringing to the market. Uh, being the leader in smartphone communication solutions, Qualcomm has a large portfolio of 3G and 4G modems that are used in many applications other than smartphones. Uh, devices such as USB dongles, uh, automotive telematics units, routers, tablets, cellular connected PCs, They've all been using our MDMs, or modems, for many years now. Our modems are highly integrated devices with support for multi-mode 3G and 4G communications with seamless fallback to 2G across heterogeneous networks with multi-band RF front ends. They are highly optimized for power with industry-leading talk and standby time and many have further integration with GPS and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. They can even act as standalone Wi-Fi access points and have built-in processors capable of running high-level operating systems. And it's, it's really it's this last point that I made about running high-level operating systems that allows us to position these modems in various higher-end M2M applications and specifically direct connect smart meters. So typically, Communications boards on smart meters are architected with a cellular modem module added onto the communications board that already has a microprocessor and all the associated support components on it. Now, using Qualcomm's modems with integrated application processors, we can substantially reduce the overall bill of materials cost for a cellular connected meter. This is accomplished not only by eliminating the need for a standalone CPU, but also the need for a separate memory and other components that support that processor. For example, by integrating all this functionality onto, onto a single chipset, uh, and if you look at the power management side of it, we end up needing only a single voltage regulator. And this single regulator can supply all the power to not only the modem, but the CPU as well. On the memory side, a single DRAM and flash memory can be used to service both the modem and the CPU allowing for additional component consolidation. Nowadays, there isn't really much of a difference in the price of 128 megabyte DRAM versus one that's 256 megabytes. So consolidating memory for the modem and the CPU onto a single device can result in significant cost savings. And all of this, of course, ends up resulting in a smaller PCB footprint, which again leads to a lower cost for the entire meter. The processor on a smart communications board, by the way, is used to coordinate and route traffic from the utility coming in over the cellular network to and from various local networks that the meter might be connected to inside the house. This opens up a whole bunch of other opportunities that I'll talk about shortly. But uh, coming back to the CPU, um, considering that the integrated CPU in many instances is more powerful than the typical processor used in meters today, the additional processing power also enables higher complexity encryption algorithms to be used by the application layer. 
This allows us to further secure communications with a cellular connected smart meter, uh, adding on top of the inherently secure transport layer that exists in 3G and 4G networks. Another point that is often mentioned is the need to, and Jason touched on this briefly as well, is the need to support long deployment cycles for smart meters. The particular chipset that we are targeting for use in smart meters is one that is pin-to-pin -pin and software compatible with the LTE modem in the same product family. So this gives utilities and operators the flexibility to switch over to LTE without having to redesign any of the hardware or software. In fact, a utility or operator could decide to deploy an LTE capable meter from day one and only switch on the LTE capability when the operator decides it makes business sense to start reforming 3G spectrum for 4G. So on this slide, we're showing how the integration of our 3G and 4G chipsets with the integrated processor contributes to the reduction of system level cost by 20% or more in an integrated smart meter. The key components being consolidated are the multiple CPUs that might exist and the memory chips that go along with it and all the ancillary devices such as the power management ICs, passives, and of course the printed circuit board. So once all of that is consolidated and integrated into a single chip, the overall cost for a meter can come down substantially, making cellular connected meters with the integrated processes like we have uh, very, very competitive with other technologies. So as I mentioned before, having that additional processing power available in the meter enabled it to start doing things that, that meters usually would not be able to do, uh, traditional meters. For one, it can act as a gateway to the connected home. So as electric car chargers, home energy management systems, connected thermostats, smart appliances, and other devices like that start getting inside homes, the connected smart meter with the right amount of built-in processing capability can start acting as the interface between the utility and the homeowner. There are many short-range wireless and wired technologies that are working their way into homes today. And once the meters start interacting with them, with the appropriate firewalls in place, of course, we can expect a whole lot of innovation to come to market that can only benefit the entire industry. So hopefully this gives you a good sense of how Qualcomm modems with the integrated application processing capability are enabling meters at price points that are very competitive with other technologies and also give utilities the opportunity to open up a whole set of new capabilities and ways to interact with their customers. Thank you, Sanfair.